waiting for whatever. I got a lot of really awesome projects planned for 2024, and I'm gonna be shooting a lot of them solo, meaning I'm gonna be doing the directing, the cinematography, the producing, the post-production, pretty much all by myself. So in light of the topic, I figure I walk you through my entire solo filmmaking kit that I'm gonna be using this year, meaning everything across the board that I would use to make a project solo, from camera rig to lights to audio equipment. And we're not gonna do it set up like this. This was only set up for my, my thumbnail, which obviously worked because you're here. This video is sponsored by Musicbed, which is where I'll be sourcing my music from for my projects in 2024. Back. All right, so here we are in my home studio, which is essentially just a spare bedroom where I live, saves money, don't have to commute. I'm a pretty simple guy. So first thing, let's start out with my camera rig, how I build out my camera. I took it all apart, it's in pieces here so I can break it down, but here's a full diagram of what it looks like rigged out. The camera that I'm using is the camera that I'm using to film this. It's my only camera and not to anyone's surprise who's been watching my channel. It's a Sony FX3. I love how small it is. I can pretty much do anything with it. The quality is remarkable for how small of a package it is and having a small package as a solo filmmaker, not talking about your wiener, I'm talking about, you know, the camera. Yeah, there's nothing that I haven't really been able to achieve with this camera. Lensing, I'm filming with the Sony 24 to 70. Again, I'm a simple guy. It's got the range that I need. I love not having to change lenses on set when you're by yourself. You can just find the focal length to your desire. If you want a little more compressed image, you got that 70. If you need something wider, 24 on a full frame works really well. But if I do, for some reason, need something wider, I do have the Sony 20 millimeter uh, F1.8, which I rarely use. On front of the lens, I typically like to use some filtration. I've been really loving uh, some black satin. I use the Tiffin black satin one fourth. Just kind of takes the edge off of things without being overly glowy like the black pro mist, which I used to enjoy a lot, but then it, uh, it kind of just became too bloomy for my taste as my taste developed. So uh, the black satin is something that I prefer on there. And then in terms of ND filter, I'm always rocking the Polar Pro uh, Peter McKinnon Signature Edition version two. I just used the two to five. This works great. I beat it up. I use this thing like a lens cap. Caging wise around, everything is pretty much condor blue. I mount my monitor using this little condor blue arm. I got, you know, rail packages and stuff so I can attach a battery plate. This also came from condor blue. Uh, battery wise, I'm using uh, Anton Bauer Dioptic. I've been using these for a couple years. And my monitor is the Cine 7 from Small HD. Uh, it's a newer monitor. It's pretty expensive. Not gonna lie, they sent this to me for free. I don't love using the small screen on the FX3. I, I can't really see everything that's happening in the frame, which is why I love having just a big monitor that I'll mount on top. And then in terms of audio, the Sony FX3 comes with uh, XLR inputs and the handle that it comes with. So I typically run XLR from a short little guy like this into my Rode NTGB, NTG3B microphone. Then also if I'm filming a subject and I want more than just a shotgun mic and I want crisper dialogue audio from my subject, I'll lav them up. I use the Rode Wireless Pros, the brand new ones. They got the 28-bit floats. It's what I'm using now. It's what is attached to me currently. So you got this little guy. Super small, compact. Uh, they have the 28-bit float, so like it, you don't have to worry too much about your levels. I could absolutely scream at the top of my lungs right now. Like, yeah, I can talk really loud. And the levels probably aren't peaking because I can just bring that down in post. So <laughs> hopefully that worked. And also while we're here, I also use the DJI RS2 for my gimbal. Still using the RS2. This thing has been a workhorse for me. I'm a master at bouncing the FX3 on this. All right, got lots more to talk about. Let's move on over to like my computer area where I do like my editing, pre-production, all that good stuff. Before we move on, we have our employee of the month here. She's my only employee uh, here in her uh, Tempur-Pedic cooling gel bed. How's that, how's that bed, girl? 
So right here is where you're gonna find me standing pretty much 95% of my life. <laughs> just either editing, coming up with ideas, writing emails, searching for music, whatever it is. Got a nice little standing desk. Don't even know what brand this is. I got it off Amazon, but must. Like I can't sit all day. Here I have my main computer, which is an iMac. Let me open up about this Mac so I can give you specifics. It's the MacBook Pro 16-inch 2021. I have the Apple M1 Max chip, memory 64 gigabytes. Uh, still on an older <laughs> OS system. I don't typically update anything. Then my second monitor here is an Apple display. Just got it. I like it. It's not like perfect for color grading, but I enjoy it. My two speakers here, these things are beast. Uh, it's called, from a company called Atom Audio. Uh, which I never heard of, but they sent these for free. So speaking of speakers, let's talk about where I'm gonna be getting my music from for my films. I am going to be switching back to Musicbed for 2024. Uh, I have used them a ton in the past. I use Musicbed for my feature film, which is finally coming out to the public in 2024, uh, hopefully in the spring. The boy who lived. Dude. Which I used a lot of Musicbed music for. Uh, and I just have a lot of really great projects that I'm planning this year that I want to be super high quality and super unique and the best place to find the most amount of unique high quality music is going to be on Musicbed. Started going through Musicbed and coming through all the new music that they've added and seeing what I can pick out and choose for all the great projects that have coming up for this year and I'm finding a lot of great stuff, not surprised at all. It's got all the great features you would need. Uh, search tools, like, you know, easily find whatever it is you're looking for. Like you're looking for something orchestral and sci-fi, you got that, and Starfall. So these speakers freaking rock, man. If you're interested in trying out Musicbed, go ahead and check out the link in my description below, and you'll get one month free when you sign up. Great deal on an excellent product, so. Try it out. In pre-production, I do all my pre-production mill note. I've talked about it. I get my reference images from Shot Deck. I, s I share my project uh, to clients and, and people on the crew and whatnot to get feedback through frame.io. Then editing wise, I'm still using Adobe Premiere Pro. I know a lot of people have been switching over to Resolve. I'll occasionally go into Resolve to do some color grading stuff if I have to. But man, I love editing in Adobe Premiere. Um, I'll probably never stop. All right, let's move on to lights. This is pretty much the tripod I bring everywhere with me. It's just a little peak design guy. Travels really nicely, fits anywhere. My main lighting that I'll typically bring if I'm working by myself. I'll, I'll like to use, keep things pretty simple for the most part. So I'll have one main key light. This is an Aperture 600D Pro. It's usually stronger than anything that I need. Like I usually have it like max 50% brightness, but I'll use that and I'll use this freaking big freaking dome. So once this thing unfolds, easy to transport because it breaks down so easily, it becomes a super big soft source that I would mainly use for like an interview or something. I also have an Aperture 300X that I'll occasionally bring with me. Again, all this stuff they sent me, so like, I probably wouldn't own this nice of lights if they didn't send me this already, but it's what I use. One of my favorite lights that I typically like to use is the Nanlite Pavo Tube. This is the Pavo Tube 2, 30X, full RGB, you know, much better than the first version in my opinion. And I'll bring a couple of these wherever I go. I have some little versions of this big guy. That come in handy from time to time. Also, here are my one wheels down here. I use the one wheel pretty often for tracking gimbal shots. It's coming soon, I promise. I like, I can't wait to freaking get this thing out there in the world. So grip equipment wise, I don't have much. I'm not, I'm not like a big grip guy, but got a couple C stands from newer, newer, just like that, like Amazon brand. It, they're pretty solid. Uh, I get made fun of for my C stands where I buy actual grips pretty often. So then I have this like big boom pole mic thing that I bring with me just to boom out whatever. Yep, I mean that, that's that's basically it. I got a whole closet of crap that I literally never use. I try to keep things as simple as possible when I'm out shooting solo. Uh, you want to create as much real estate in your mind 
for the actual project itself and the creative and the logisticals that you're dealing with without having to worry about all the extra gear that you're bringing, all the extra software and all the extra stuff that you know can stack up when you get really deep into this filmmaking thing. So that's what I use. I hope you found this interesting. Definitely check out Musicbed. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video. I'm excited to be using Musicbed and music again in my films. I think it's gonna up the level of production that you're gonna see in my projects this year. I'll link everything that you saw here in the description. Hopefully I remember. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's it. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye. I'm the last of my kind.